on a treasure hunt I long for something new Hey friends, welcome to the Sunshine Farm. Today though, we're actually gonna be heading across the country out to San Diego and I'm going to take you on a tour of my sister and brother-in-law's food forest and garden in Southern California in San Diego. So let's go, let's go head that way. Sage. Uh, what did it look like before? So before this, it would look it was all compacted brick. And then we just had these big dirt piles. So I built these raised beds, put some uh, just Kellogg's organic in there, and then um, teed off some some drip irrigation under the sidewalk. So now they're fully automated. Hi Sage. Sage loves the peas. <laughs> And you guys moved here only a year ago, right? Yeah, a year and three months ago. Mm -hmm. So we've been... This garden's been here since last May. Yeah, May is when we put this in. So almost a year. How long did it take for things to really do well? Ooh, it took a couple months. Yeah. Maybe six months. Because before that, the soil um, was pretty like lacking in life. So it stuff was stunted and yellow. And then we have free compost in San Diego here at the dump. So we added a bunch of that and then some of our home compost. And then things just started taking off. As you can see, the collard greens, the peas, the fava beans, everything kind of just gets gargantuan out here. Um, and we have some green onion that's about three and a half feet tall. Oh, holy cow, look at that thing. And this is kind of like the end of your winter garden, right? Yeah, yeah. We're about yeah. to transition into uh, more peppers and tomatoes and watermelon and stuff like that. And so what's growing out here right now from the, from the winter garden? We have cilantro and garlic. Some of the smaller garlics that I had extras of, I just put in the raised beds. I'm not sure how well they'll do, but I think it's good for some pest control. And then we have sorrel. And then there's some pansies because I like to have edible flowers mixed in with my veggies. And yeah, there's snap peas, fava beans. It's really pretty. Oh, nope, is that nope. a collard green? This is collard greens, yeah. And I heard collard greens here can grow into the summer. So oh, cool. we might just keep it as a year round. Michelle, look at what's in her right hand. Uh-oh. So is that a hot pepper? pepper? Yeah, this is a jalapeno. Oh. Uh, we still have some some remnant stuff uh, that hung over from our from our summer garden. And seen in Southern California, summer really extends into like October, early November, mm -hmm. before we start getting kind of any winter weather at all. And so, honestly, like October is kind of some of our best time for tomatoes because that's when it gets dry. Um, summer can be here this close to the water. We'll have a lot of coastal influence, and so we get really bad blight. So I think we get maybe two frost days a year. If okay. that, um, on average, yeah. we, up we're kind of up on a mesa above a can uh, near a canyon, so kind of all the cold air flows down into the canyon. Mm. Um, that canyon freezes all the time, and it's only like a mile from our house. Oh wow! So down here, it's like in, in Southern California, it's all about like your little microclimates and how things are. They're like we're two and a half miles from the beach, so we got a lot of coastal influence. Um, we're not that close to any of the inland mountains, so we don't have that much weather. Um, from from the inland really driving our ecosystem, but yeah. we're far enough though that we get a little less fog, which is nice. We have two fruit trees out front. We have a strawberry guava, which is about the size of, yeah, of a strawberry. And then we also have a fig that's called a Diana fig. It's a yellow fig that tastes really a lot like honey. Sage, you wanna show us the backyard garden? Let's go look at look in the back. Do you recall when we were young, running from all things? Of You're a spelling. A, what kind of tree is this? It's a Fuyu persimmon. Persimmon, oh I love persimmons. Yeah, this this is the kind that they grow um, 
a lot more kind of flat pancake shape. Uh huh. Vegan raw, they're delicious. That's awesome. Um, waiting for this tree to leaf out before we put it in the ground because that's what we were told to do at the nursery. Okay. Um, we've got this really cool nursery 40 minutes from here called Claws and Nursery that wholesales fruit trees. They've got all all sorts of stuff. That's where we've gotten all of our trees. So here, this was one of our places where we most successfully grew tomatoes. Um, you get a lot of, with the direction of the sun, you get a lot of radiant heat off the um, off this fence early in the morning. So that really kind of drives like your tomato plants. And so this is a volunteer from last year. Um, I also grew a lot of my like hottest peppers here, which I'll have to figure out how to prevent her from grabbing because that could be a problem. Is that your favorite thing to grow, hot peppers? That's my favorite thing to grow. This this little guy right here is a habanero. Um, that plant produced actually pretty well. Um, it's starting to come back. All of these lasted through the through the winter, and they're starting to leaf out now. We'll probably probably give them a good feeding and then see how they uh, they go for the rest of the year. This is a scorpion pepper. Um, extremely hot. It's actually hotter than this one. This is a ghost pepper. Everyone's heard of a ghost pepper. So this is actually my second hottest. And this little thing tucked back in here is um, a chocolate seven pot. Oh, cool. Amazing flavor. It's like just below, uh, it's like slightly, slightly, slightly milder than um, your Carolina Reaper, which is the hottest pepper in the world. So that's wow. number two. Um, we have to be careful with uh, the little one because I don't know what would happen if she were to pop a pepper would. like that. This is our little blueberry patch. We put these in raised beds because we want to keep the acidic soil kind of contained so that way it doesn't like... Is that one? This, that one's one, this one's called a star. Um, didn't produce a ton this year, uh, but it, it looks healthy. It grew some. This is a south moon. Um, so these are kind of like classic blueberry flavors. Um, this one almost tastes more like a wild blueberry, um, a little more tart. Um, and then this is a pink lemonade uh, blueberry. Um, which is really has a ton of fruit on it. These, uh, when they ripen, they ripen pink, and they so cool. And they taste really good. And is, what is that? This is uh, kind of a rare variety of citrus. It's called a Cara Cara navel orange. Someone was growing them, and they noticed off this one limb, it was throwing pink fruit. So they propagated that limb and turned it into a new variety called the Cara Cara. And so it's big leaves. Yeah, it tripped me out. I've actually this is the first time I've ever grown one of these. Um, we've been buying them at the farmers market, and they it, it, you cut into it, and it looks like a grapefruit. Oh, cool! Um, but the flavors, oh, it's different than your standard navel. It's a little more complex. What's your favorite part of the garden? I think probably the peas and blueberries. Yeah. Um, we're gonna kind of restructure over here with just some kind of aesthetic stuff. Put in some ornamental plants as well as uh, fruit trees and garden spaces. We love running around playing in here. It's it's a nice functional space for us to have. Um, we're not all about maximizing production. We're about having you know. Eating, being able to eat and play and like kind of live in this space as well. Yeah, you've got like perennials and annuals all mixed together back here. Mm -hmm. um, and wild cats. Wild cats. Okay, yeah, so this is your new new baby. Yeah, this is a banana, which uh, being down here in coastal Southern California, you actually can do bananas here. This one's a cross between an ornamental banana and, uh, and an edible one. It's called a Sumatrana cross or something like that. Then we have our composting materials kind of over here. And then we can show you the compost later. Yeah, we'll you've, got to some, you've got some compost going. Yeah. And then you've got another fig tree here. Uh, this is another addition to uh, somewhat recent. Put this in in February right before the leaf out. Um, this is a Diana, or no, Violet de Bordeaux fig. The other one we have is a Diana. So this one... Um, Figs are red and they taste, or kind of a maroon color. The mm -hmm. flesh is red and they have a very strong kind of berry flavor. And they're mm. really, really, really good. So you've got some herbs growing over here. Mm -hmm. We threw a kiwi back here, um, planted it like last summer. Didn't do well. Maybe it'll leaf out some it's more. Coming back it's to got life. a couple leaves here, but that might be a rethink about where in the space 
uh, to, to try to grow kiwi. You've thrown some, this is again, arugula gone to seed, some, uh, I don't know what these flowers are, but Michelle probably does. Something fun. Yeah. Baby's breath. Oh, look at that, baby's breath. This is a Mexican pink guava. Um, this also came from Claws and Nursery. When you go there, they have guavas. They're like a whole quarter of their of their nursery is guava trees that they were going to sell that are in 15 gallon buckets that have busted through uh, the roots, busted through the bottom, and now they're like 15 feet tall. Oh wow! It's it's kind of cool. Um, this one's uh, it's a tropical guava, so it's like a true guava. Um, put that in last year. It was like a little five gallon tree. Now it's a bit taller. Might get some fruit off it off of it this year. I'd love to, but. We'll see. When they, they grow up and have really cool looking trunks and it should be like a nice tree to look at as well. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. Hi Malachi. Oh. Are you enjoying the garden? Yeah, we're hanging out. We have fa more fava beans. Maybe don't pick that, it's not ripe yet. <laughs> and we have Sage's favorite, ground cherries. Oh. And ours are actually the Peruvian kind. They're a little bit more tart and um, tropical tasting than the typical ground cherry. They're really good. And I have some kale planted in here. I really like the purple color just for decoration mainly, but we do eat it as well. And then we have some straw flowers in the middle left from last season. And on the edge over here, we have chives just planted as well as some thyme, lemon thyme, oregano. And more fava so beans. Good. If anyone wants fava beans, if you live in Southern California um, and want fava beans, come on over. Uh, you could be inviting some so people. So many. <laughs> <laughs> on this back fence, this is passion fruit. Oh, um, cool. I put this in in the fall last year. And, uh, and the idea with this is that it'll trellis across kind of most of the fence. Yeah. And kind of pr give us some, you know, some nice privacy. <laughs> Pomegranate tree, Pomegranate. put this in last year in May. Hopefully this will provide fruit. It's uh, starting to blossom. This flower right here looks- Oh wow, they're really, beautiful. Really, really, really pretty. Um, so this should keep blossoming for a while. And um, then you, you had your first strawberry the other day, right? Yeah, so this is our little strawberry patch, but I really love the mixture of growing flowers in with fruit. So I found this six pack, I think it's called Nemesia. And it actually kind of reminded me of coral, like the colors reminded me of underwater coral. So I love growing it as a ground cover. And then eventually I'm gonna add in some yarrow along here just for the bees. And I have a lavender plant, so I'd love if it was kind of a mixture of strawberries and ornamentals with um, some yarrow. So a little bit of more of a native garden. Got some more peas and garlic over here and onions. And then this is planted in the ground over here, right? Yes, this is in ground. And our soil here is really rich, so, but it doesn't drain very well. So we just add compost right on top and things grow amazing and fast in our soil and in ground. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. What are your biggest struggles growing here? I would say in the summer, it's really hard. You um, have to keep on top of water because we don't get much rain pretty much from May through November we probably get maybe one or two very small storms so the thing that we have to deal with is putting in a lot of drip irrigation and then making sure that plants stay well watered we also have fog and we so with the fog it brings in a lot of moisture so we can get downy mildew and since we garden year-round another thing that we can struggle with is pests because nothing ever has a frost so we pretty much deal with pests year-round um, and something that we have noticed is that as we've improved the health of our soil, the pests have gone down, but we really do struggle with um, caterpillars, worms, and aphids are probably our top pests, I would say, and then mold um, and mildew. So a lot of our plants, we, especially the kale, will um, get really moldy probably starting in a month or so. So it's really just a winter crop here. And you also have the scavenger. Yeah. She, you, do you call her a pest? Yeah. And you have a couple more perennials back here, and you have your citrus back here. Mm -hmm. So this is a pineapple guava. We haven't figured out where in this space we want to plant it because we um, are going to have this back space kind of. We're going to work with the landscape architect to kind of put in some paths and just kind of get like a nice feel to the yard. So we'll put this in the next couple months or something like that. This is some type of table grape. Um, it was cut back. To about here we had to have the whole house 
um, fumigated. We didn't get any grapes last year because it was regrowing um, so heavily. But now you can see here we're we're gonna have some fruit, which is fun. Oh, cool! Um, this is more passion fruit. We got another passion few, vine. Yeah, quite a few last year. Um, this year we hope to get more. Uh, got a this, pretty peach tree. This peach is delicious. We're not sure what the variety is because we didn't. We didn't plant it. It's a uh, low low chill hour peach because we don't get a lot of chill hours here. That's something you have to worry about if you live somewhere that doesn't get a consistent frost. Um, a lot of stone fruit need certain number of hours below 45 degrees in order to kind of stress the wood and produce fruit, or mm. else you know they just you don't get much fruit production. Plenty of fruit here though. Not maybe necessarily the most ideal spot for citrus, but it works. Um, this this little thing right here that we have in a pot. Variegated uh, leaves. Yes, so this is a variegated pink lemonade lemon. So, so pretty. the lemons will kind of grow and they'll look sort of this color, um, kind of like a, a light yellowy, um, almost gray color with uh, with green variegations on them. Mm -hmm. And then they'll, you cut them open and they're bright pink in the middle. So oh, cool. they're, kind of, they're a fun thing to have. Uh, this was a little, um, this is a semi dwarf Valencia orange. We have one, one orange left over from last year that we're letting ripe, uh, get ripe. But um, this has done really, really, really well this year. A ton of new growth on it. Very happy about that because this area, this was some of that native clay I was telling you about. Meyer lemon's not like a, it's it's not like a standard lemon. I believe it's a cross between a Valencia orange, something else. So it's a lot sweeter than um, your standard lemon. So they're really good for lemonade things like that. Um, and then this is a Bear's lime. Um, oh cool, look at all those blossoms. Yeah, oh, it's so fun. Like you come over here and you just hear bees buzzing. It's great. So these two these two trees and the peach were here when we when we moved in and the grape. Um, and so that's kind of, that was in this space. This tree has grown tremendously since I put the compost in. Um, so we have our compost bins over here. And uh, home, home, just making compost uh, at home is super fun because all that food scraps that you would normally throw away you can now turn into superfood for your plants. Um, we just used everything from this side of the bin, and uh, this tree has all of its roots right under the bin. I know because I had to <laughs> dig under the bin, yeah. and there was just a whole network of whole network of, of roots. And I was wondering, like, you know, basically you can tell all this is new growth that's grown in the past couple of months. So it really likes the compost. It's just yeah, it's completely suckering off of. Yeah, there's so many bees. I'll just bring kitchen scraps in here, and then back in that back corner by the bananas there was that giant pile of brown leaves as i bring kitchen scraps in or, or, or um lawn lawn uh trimmings i i add in a couple of buckets of, of the dry leaves and uh it works pretty good i mean you can see it's definitely it's definitely cooking in here oh yeah it looks hot and uh it's nice and warm what do you see yourself doing with this yard in the future now that you've been here for a year what's next mm. A lot of, I think kind of, cause you know, this is our backyard. This isn't like necessarily like a, a farm space. Um, we want to improve kind of the aesthetics around here, put some rock work, put some paths, put some more ornamentals. Um, and from there kind of, once we get a structure of like seeing uh, what, what the space looks like visually, we're going to keep adding in over here, you know, maybe another strawberry patch, maybe on this side of the, of this fence, we'll, we'll trellis um, some berries. Uh, kind of stuff like that. So you want to do some edible landscaping? Yeah, yeah. That's kind of the the, um, the biggest thing is we want to make it an edible landscape. Every tree I've planted so far has is, is a fruit tree. And there's a lot of trees that are really, really, really pretty. Like your guava trees are gorgeous. The uh, pomegranates are really pretty. Figs, I think, are, are, are stunning. Citrus, when they're healthy, look really good. It's like the overall look. There's so much that you can grow here in, in Southern California. You deal with a, you know, you deal with poor soil, poor water quality. Our, our water is pretty alkaline and has a lot of um, just minerals in there that, when you irrigate a lot, leaches into the soil. Um, but uh, when you can kind of get past those hurdles, there's just so much variety of what you can grow in this climate. Where can uh, people find you guys? Follow along the garden. Um, Michelle Lily White. Um, on Instagram and then I think she also has her uh, she posts a lot onto another one called lovely little life I'll post Michelle's <laughs> links down yeah. below. Thanks for uh, thanks for stopping by and saying hi and uh, seeing what gardening looks like on, down in San Diego the other side of the country.